what exactly is circadian disruption? What causes circadian yeah. disruption and, and why does that happen? Yeah, so we are all born with a very strong circadian rhythm. And you can see that when you have toddlers who go to sleep strongly for seven, eight, nine hours, uh, and then they, have a, they become cranky if they're not sleeping at the right time. So that means we all are born with a strong circadian rhythm, most of us. What disrupts our circadian rhythm in modern days? There are few factors. One, light is a very strong signal to shape our circadian rhythm. The reason is we humans have been living on this planet for 200,000 years. And outside the equator, our day length changes between summer and winter. So that means we have to adjust our circadian rhythm to wake up around dawn at summertime and also wake up around dawn in wintertime. So as a result, nature has engineered us in a way that we have a blue light sensor in the retina. We call it melanopsin. And I'm happy to, and also proud that we, along with two other labs, co-discovered this melanopsin 20 years ago. And so this blue light in the morning, daylight is the richest source of blue light. Uh, it can align our circadian rhythm with morning. So this was designed for us to live in natural world when the only bright source of blue light was daylight. Now we fast forward and in the post-industrial era, and particularly only in the last 30 to 40 years, we are exposed to a lot of light at night. So that means all the modern LED lights and bright light, they also have a good amount of blue light. And that blue light confuses our brain because as we turn on the blue, we live under bright light until say nine or 10 or 11 at night, our brain thinks that it's still daytime. So it doesn't turn on the melatonin production. And this is one form of circadian disruption. The most obvious form of circadian rhythm disruption is for people who work in night shift or day shift. We call them shift workers. So for example, you know, airline pilots, uh, firefighters, cops, so people working in service industry, for example, bakers and cooks, chefs, a lot of them. So nearly one in five working adults in the U United States and also in many industrialized countries is a shift worker. And the definition of shift work that disrupts circadian rhythm is someone who stays awake for two to three hours between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m. when people are supposed to sleep, expected to sleep, for at least one day in a week or 50 days in a year. So the reason why at least one day a week is if we delay our sleep by two to three hours one day, it's almost like we are flying over two to three time zones. And we know that when you fly from East Coast to West Coast or vice versa, although it's a three hours time zone difference, it might take you three to four days to adjust to new time zone. So that means even if you stay awake till midnight, one night, your body might take two to three days to adjust to that. And then if you come back, so so this this, this is a very, uh, functional definition of circadian rhythm disruption. Now, if we apply to all of us, then we know that a lot of us, many of us would stay awake till midnight or so, socializing with friends or families in the weekends. Or for people who just had a newborn baby, they would stay awake, changing diapers two to three times in the night. So they're also going through circadian rhythm disruption. So almost every new mom or every new dad is going through circadian rhythm disruption. And the high school and colleges now, um, when people are getting homework, uh, most of them, very often the deadline for submitting their homework is midnight. So they are staying awake. So we can say that almost everybody is going through some kind of circadian rhythm disruption by just being exposed to bright light and staying awake until midnight or so. Uh, for at least four to five years in their lifetime. So in a way, although we have been living with circadian rhythm, we are experiencing this 
wide scale security under them disruption only in the 20 to 30 last years. So we're going through this epidemic of security under them disruption. And now the quest question is, what happens if you go through it? So there are three or four different lines of evidences that scientists use. One is they look at people who have been doing shift work for several years and ask, are they at a higher risk for any disease than the general population? And a lot of studies all over the world and synthesis of that results by independent committees by World Health Organization has come to a conclusion that doing shift work is almost like getting exposed to a carcinogen or cancer-causing agent because those who do shift work for example, firefighters, nurses, etc., they are at a high risk for cancer, certain kinds of cancer. Then there are also other studies showing that if you take even normal healthy individuals and disrupt their circadian rhythm by reducing their sleep time and, or subjecting them to shift work-like schedule, then even the healthy people within a week or two they will become glucose intolerant. So that means they cannot control their blood glucose that easily. So th these are experimental approach. And then we can also take laboratory animals and disrupt their circadian rhythm by changing their light dark cycle as if they're flying over three or five time zones every week. And we are finding that they also get more prone to diabetes, obesity, liver disease, and cardiovascular disease. So if we combine all of these three evidence from three different sources, observation, clinical intervention, and animal studies, we're finding that there are nearly 100 different diseases starting from glucose intolerance, depression, anxiety, to cancer and dementia, whose risk go up if people go through this circadian disruption. Okay, uh, I'm I'm the uh, the super nerd in the room here, and I'm always whenever I hear things about you know biological processes, the first place that my head always goes to is what is the mechanism, right? So, um, two questions for you: If you could, before we get to the mechanism, could you go backwards and explain to us when people refer to blue light, what are they actually referring to? Because correct me if I'm wrong, the light is not actually blue, but uh, it's called blue light because why? It's enriched in the blue UV spectrum. You, you tell us what that means, actually. Yeah, so almost all of us uh, in our middle school science, we know that if you put a prism in front of light, then the light will diffract into seven different colors. So that means even though we are seeing white light, it's composed of six or seven different colors. And the spectra go from, say, 350 400, so that's the UV violet light to red light, which will be 600 plus nanometer. Uh, sorry, angstrom. So then blue light is the cyan blue color that's around 480 nanometer. And uh, uh, so this light um, is present in many white light or orange light that we use. So for example, if you take a, if you go purchase a, LED lamp from Home Depot or any other store, you will see there are three, two or three different flavors. One looks very bluish white, and then one might look like a candlelight orange light. So the one that looks very bluish white or super bright white light, that actually has more blue light. Whereas the one that looks like a candlelight orange color, that doesn't have as much blue light. So that's the difference. So if you're going to put a new light bulb in your bedroom, <laughs> so look for, or, or the table lamp, then uh, look for that orange color LED light or light uh, for your bedroom. And if you use, if you, in the morning when you wake up, if you're going to brush your teeth and in the uh, toilet, bathroom, if you have those bright blue LED and you use them in the morning, then that's also good. So you kind of mimics that daylight. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so basically you're saying the lights that are in the room that I'm in right now that are staring at me in the face 
are the exact types of lights that I should eliminate from my house because they're during during, during the night nighttime. time. Exactly right. <laughs> so, exactly. You need that during daytime because the blue light is also these blue sensing cells in our brain, in our retina or eyes. They also connect to part of the brain that improve our alertness. So that means during daytime, the blue light acts as an agent that would increase alertness, reduce depression. So that's why daylight or blue and red light during daytime is the best antidepressant. Whereas at nighttime, it can have a very different effect. It will reduce sleep and will I make see. you more cranky. I see. Okay, got it. And everyone knows that Robbie is extremely cranky, so maybe that's a reason to try and change. <laughs> Got to do something about the lighting here. Yeah. Now we know. Now we know. <laughs>